I'm gonna go ahead and get. Well, you did a good idea going outside because you get natural lighting that way. So. Yeah, and my boyfriend's asleep inside, so I didn't want to like bother him. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me see if I want to cut this off. All right. So I, I like I said, I've been kind of hidden some. I think I got a little con burnout. You ever had that before? Not really. I'm actually really sad because uh, AST on ASEN were my last two. Yeah. Since I got this new job, I won't really be able to do anything for the rest of the year, I don't think, unless by well, some miracle I get to go to CAD. Well, like I said, you know, you said you're off on Sundays, right? Yeah. Yeah, so what I'm thinking about doing is just come, I'll probably come up there to do shoots because, like, okay, our whole blog thing got finally uh, – I was upset about that because I didn't think they were ever going to approve it and everything. So, like, now I got it. So, now, like, anything I stick on my blog, like I said, I get paid for now. So, I'll need content eventually. I just, like, <laughs> been struggling with, oh, I got to do videos and I got to do shoots. And it's, like, my head just explodes out of stress. And I just, like, whatever. Yeah, I know. I haven't been, like... I've, I've just been working so much. There's nothing I've really been able to do yeah. at all. Almost. Well, that's, but that's yeah. One, yeah. That's one thing like with the POA was like, I got to, ha and that's another thing too, is my schedule has changed too. Cause you're like, I was getting up really early in the morning and now I do mid afternoons and I go bed late again. So I'm back to that old schedule again. So, you know, whatever that kind of messes you up too. So I got to kind of adjust to that too. But and then I had some family issues. I had two deaths in the family. It's been crazy. And like, oh wow, I'm yeah. sorry. Well, that's okay. But like anime, St. Louis. You know when I, I mean, I literally was about to go down on a photographer. I mean, just beat his ass, and that was crazy. And that just really ticked me off because I was like, this is like what I was going through. And I'll tell you the whole story. Dude was like. You know, I was down there the, uh, waiting. I said, well, we'll do dinner here in a minute, right? So I went out there, and I saw a cute little DVA, you know, cosplayer. And I was like, I got a little time. I, since she's sitting down, and I'm not doing anything, I'm just waiting for dinner. Let's see if I can hook up and do a shoot with her. I said, hey, how you doing? You know, like, I think you, I like your cosplay. You look really good. It's like, you got time? You want to just, because we're not doing anything, you want to just go out here and do a shoot? She said, yeah, sure. So I'm like, Choo -choo -choo. we're getting good pictures and everything. And so, and of course, another photographer has to try to come in and butt in, but that's all right. You know, I knew the guy. Which, you know, this is the reason why I'm done with this whole shooting at the cons. I'm like going to get people online and we're just going to hook up and do shoots because I'll tell you what, this, this could have got ugly. So I'm like taking pictures of her and stuff. And her friend said, can I get my friend here? And she gets her friend in there, and they're playing with knives. And we're just having a blast. You know, everything looking pretty good. And dude was like, of course, I had already taken pictures of this one Instagram cosplayer a long, long time ago. So I'm like, not interested. I don't care about her. But he's trying to do a video. Dude is like, and he's backing her up. And, of course, we're in the shot. But, like, we ain't got no room. This hotel, you know how it is over there. I mean, the mm -hmm. hotel was crowded. And at this time, I don't know where you were at, but... I mean, there was nothing but photographers and people dancing and all kind of crap out in the parking lot. So it's like, dude was like, y'all going to have to move. I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm doing a shoot too, bro. I said, I ain't moving. I said, you, you're going to have to move me. And I was like, ready to just like, oh my God. You, ever, you ever saw Chris's story when the, or, the, the guy, <laughs> Peter Bingsley's going to jump on the guy? I was in that kind of mode. I was like, bro, you're going to have to move me because I'm not moving. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, you got to respect us. All right. We're doing a shoot here and you're doing a shoot. You know what? And we got a hotel that you do not own, you know, you know, and I think my words were kind of like, F you come bring it on, you know, <laughs> and it was like, of course, the dude brought back down. But I was like, really? I mean, you just don't do that. I mean, what type of ego? Thanks, Help you to move. Yeah, yeah, that's really bad. I mean, that's like if you were a cosplayer, you're doing a shoot, and some cosplayer just push. And I've seen it. Lord God knows I've seen it. But there's certain I've seen crap like that yeah. too. Yeah. I and uh, but there's some people that will beat you down if you do something like that. So did you go see the? Uh, I guess you did see Pikachu. So we'll talk. Yes, about I that. did. All right. 
and I'm excited to talk about it. I got about a little bit of notes here to talk, but yeah. All right, good. I just wanted to start early to make sure that we get done in time. Not a problem. Well, I just uh, want to introduce everybody. Um, Lukey just got finished seeing Detective Pikachu, and they are going to talk about this. So let's talk about this film. What was it like? Was it? It was, wow, it was so much fun. Um, I really liked how they did a really good job taking the Pokemon and designing them to where they fit well into like the real world. I thought all of the designs were super cool, super cute. Um, the little fluffiness of Pikachu just had me like. All kinds of feels. <laughs> Yeah, I loved it so much. And of course, Ryan Reynolds is an amazing actor. I love him very much. So it was great to see him get to play Pikachu. Um, basically, what I what I started writing down whenever I started the movie is I was just kind of keeping track of like what Pokemon I was seeing um, and a little bit about their like design and everything about that. Did you go and get to see it yet? Well, no, I was uh, going to try to do things on Friday. Like I said, I'm trying to adjust to the schedule, but, you know, I, I figured, like I said, the last three films we've done, we've not been able to get together on, but eventually we will. Okay, yeah, that's totally cool, but, um... <sighs> okay, so the movie starts out, and he, the first, one of the first Pokemon you really get to like see and interact with is a little Cubone and he's so cute and it makes me so happy and I just I feel like this is what the entire review is going to be me gushing over the cuteness of all the Pokemon <laughs> but it's fine just whatever it's okay um, that'll work <laughs> so the cityscape of uh Rhyme Town it's this place where Pokemon and humans will live side by side kind of thing um it's like a partnership of course it's really cool and um so the boy is going to rhyme city because he heard the news that his dad had passed away who was a detective in rhyme city and throughout the movie he uh you know he goes and is gonna clear out all of his father's stuff from the apartment and he runs into this little pikachu with a detective hat and it's detective pikachu who was um apparently had lost all of his memories but he knew that he was the kids uh the father's pikachu partner so basically this movie is about them going around and um and and he's <laughs> i'm jumping back and forth i'm sorry uh and pikachu says your dad's not dead i know he's not dead i know he's not so the movie is basically them running around trying to figure out uh, what happened in this accident uh, and where the dad possibly could be. And it's it's a really cool movie. It's a really cool plot. Um, what do I have here? Now is they, the, yeah? Yeah, is Detective Pikachu, is that like canon from Pokemon or how's that? I, I don't think it like is would you say canon but they ended up making a nintendo ds game right. for detective pikachu which whenever i was in japan i downloaded the demo and played it and it was really fun except for the fact that pikachu's voice was like really low and like gruff and manly and i was very yeah it was really really weird and it was english too but uh, i'm really <laughs> glad that we cast it and they got yeah pikachu as ryan reynolds because the guard was like all right we're gonna go talk to these Pokemon, and it's like, Pikachu, are you okay? <laughs> it sounds like one of those, like, you ever watch when they they take those uh, videos and they, like, slow them down and it looks like they're really high or, and, like, yeah. they, like, they do the... It's uh, kind of like that, yeah. I guess. I don't know. It's, it's, it's just really weird and it doesn't fit Pikachu at all. I don't know what they were thinking whenever they casted the voices for that game, but whatever. None of my oh. business. <laughs> But Go ahead. as uh, as the boy and his, uh, his dad's little Pikachu, they're running around looking for answers and they run into this girl. And she's like a junior intern reporter and she's also looking for the father. She's thinking uh, she wants the scoop on this accident and everything that's going on because, you know, she wants to 
be doing good in her job. And um, the thing that I liked about her is that her Pokemon partner was a Psyduck. And it was really, really big. If you've seen my Instagram, I have a really big duck that I got for Easter. And the entire time I was watching this, I was just thinking of literally that size of a duck just following me around in the streets. And it was so cute. Was Psyduck, Psyduck. I loved it so much. But um, they would bring this Psyduck on all of these adventures and journeys. And the thing is, Psyducks, uh, when they get stressed, their heads will explode. Like, they will send off, like, a wave. So, like, the entire time they're running from these things, they're like, it's okay, Psyduck. Just relax, Psyduck. Everything's okay. It's all going to be okay. And the Psyduck is just freaking out the entire time. And I'm just like, huh, maybe my Pokemon partner would probably be a Psyduck. <laughs> It was so funny, though. I really enjoyed that part. Um, what else? It was so cute. I loved it. The It was just such a beautiful movie. They had uh, Pidgeot, like, flying, just, you know, regular birds flying through the air. And they, they showed some... Um, I'm skipping around in my notes a little bit, but my favorite, like beautiful part aspect of the movie was I think there was like a little gang of Bulbasaur that were just trotting through the river at one point and it was just so zen I guess it was so cute and just so it seemed so innocent and kind of relaxing at the same time um I had a list of a bunch of other Pokemon that we saw uh, we got to see in the, they eventually go to look for answers in this fighting area, like an illegal underground, like cage fighting. Right. And whenever you go in, the first thing you see is you see it's a Blastoise versus a Gengar. And it's a really cool match. You get to see the Gengar phasing in and out and all of the cool abilities of that Pokemon. And you could obviously see Blastoise being big and really cool. <laughs> I loved this movie. <laughs> um, and eventually the guy at the uh, fighting arena is like, I'm not going to give you any answers until I get a rematch with your Pikachu. And, of course, Pikachu's all puffed up. He's like, oh, yeah, you want a rematch? I can do this. I'm going to beat you all up. It's going to be great and everything. So he gets in the ring with this guy's huge Charizard. And they go, ding, ding, time to fight. And Pikachu's like, I don't know what to do. I forgot how to use all of my powers. So he's just running around in circles being like, no, don't hurt me. And um, before the Charizard enters the ring, like, there's this thing called R. It's a serum that makes these uh, Pokemon, when they breathe them, it's like it makes them into a crazed kind of state and want to harm just anything and everything around it. And uh, that's when we find out that there's more to this investigation than they're putting on. And there's a reason that the dad has gone missing. Um, so they end up escaping from the arena there. But it was a really cool opportunity to get to see an actual Pokemon battle. I think that's the only time you get to see like Pokemon battle head on in the movie, which was pretty cool. I liked that. So they they had to actually like you would see in the cartoon battling or kind of like that. Yeah. Only um yeah, pretty much only it was in like a little cage as if I don't know, I guess <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not good at explaining things today. Yeah, there's a video, and it's like, you know, it's like when I was doing, uh, uh, you know, my interviews in, um, in Jackson, and there was an Australian actress I was talking to. I, I don't know her because I never saw this show. There was a, I guess it was a, which one was the Jim Henson uh, science fiction show? I don't know. It's uh anyway I don't know either but anyways uh, she was down there her name and so she did we did, I did an interview with her and she she's she saw my a Pokemon hat I was wearing and she goes asked about well it's basically the best way to describe Pokemon to people I said well it's kind of like uh you know 
caged fighting like except for you're dealing with animals like you you put them in balls and <laughs> throw them out there uh it's and she says that's about as much as i need to know there because uh, <laughs> it's it's no way to describe and and there has been some cynical people talk about that where it's like oh man that's like they're like it's uh ash is like michael vick you know he's got his pit bulls and <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend fight. in elementary school. Uh, her parents wouldn't let her watch Pokemon because yeah. it was animal fighting. Yes, and and that I never really thought about that until you know I heard it. Of course, you know they were just being cynical about it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, people. Some people can take it seriously. Um, there, I know the two banned episodes and the one banned episodes. The one banned episode in America is the one that kept um, my girlfriend's uh, boys from seeing that and but it never aired in America what um, I didn't know that there was any band episodes yeah there's a band one from Japan and there's a band one from America and so well basically you know like you know I, you know whether people understand you know of course I do understand the whole lully lifestyle thing because we were in it what for four years or four or five something years. like that yeah and and a lot of people don't understand that you know we we call it you know nowadays and there's still lully trolls out there but there's not as many but you know it's like a lully troll and so like it was basically they kind of wanted to do that lully troll thing like uh um the biggest one is uh what's that show with the i cannot think of the anime with the uh, but anyways uh it's not lucky is it it's lucky star yeah lucky star yeah okay you know it's all low it's basically lowly troll right it's low and so uh so i think basically pokemon wanted to do like a lowly troll episode and they did one and then in America, they didn't understand what they were doing. Yeah. And so it was banned. And because, like, but people don't understand, like, <laughs> when you do lowly troll, what you're actually doing. You're not, like, really justifying that lifestyle, but you're more or less making fun of it, you know. And so, you know, like, Lucky, I mean, Lucky Star is your biggest lowly troll there is. And but it, the, and the whole reason why like when you get to the second season of it, it's like really okay that's going too far. <laughs> yeah. you, you just stop and and I'm glad there was never any more seasons after it because it it just got to the point where it just got creepy by the second season because they really did. Get it was a weird anime for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean the first I never one. Never got to watch all of it. Yeah. Honestly, I watched a few episodes and I was like, "What is this?" Yeah, like... and then you get into the. But like I said, the, you know, and then you get like shows like I like I told you, my favorite is High School Rumble. I love that show because I love the writing. Mm -hmm. But they did their uh, Magical Girl episode, and they're spoofing the whole because the whole thing is spoofing everything. So when they spoof that Magical Girl episode, oh my gosh, I just I just fell on my chair. It was so hilarious. It just like really made fun of the whole magical girl <laughs> aspect thing. that's perfect it was great they did great stuff like that and so like i said that was the band one from america and then the band one in japan is when pikachu goes in the strobe light pikachu and it caused all these uh japanese people to go into um what do you call it uh, oh epilepsy echo epilepsy so that was banned in japan Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, they That's didn't. Crazy. Yeah, they didn't think it was really bad. And something about I don't know what it is why they're more subject to epilepsy than Americans are. I mean, like every Nintendo game. Remember, we used to back in the day, used to get the Nintendo games. Oh, standing too close to the monitor it could cause epilepsy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, that was because. All these kids were buying those Nintendo games with the flashing lights and just like throwing up and falling on the ground, you know. Like mom and dad's like, oh! <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. I wouldn't know what to do. Right. And it's like, can you imagine? Like you're watching Pokemon, and that's what happened. I mean, a bunch of kids got started getting epilepsy seizures. So Pretty anybody edu just educating on the two. Uh, band episodes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I I had no idea that those even like existed. 
Like, I had no idea. Oh, yeah. Well, I've always watched, like, some Pokemon as a kid, but I wasn't, like, yeah. I didn't know everything about it. But thanks to YouTube, you can watch those episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds I'm good. down in my Reddit. So, all right. So, that was our plot. So, uh, let me see here. As far as characters, and uh, what did you think of uh, the acting? In the epi- and, uh, I mean, besides Ryan Reynolds, obviously, he's awesome. Well, um, okay. So, well, I guess we're not really done with the plot. Oh, okay. There's still more to it. Yeah, there's, there's, it's, it gets real twisty. Like, there's a bunch of, I'm going to do my best to... <laughs> Try and explain it, but I, I don't have much more notes, but I, I have notes up here. That's right. It's a twist. <laughs> yes, very twist. Um, so basically, they end up tracing this R stuff back to a testing facility, which uh, it's basically supposed to enhance and manipulate the evolution of these different Pokemon. And you come to find out that the, I guess it's the mayor of Rhyme City or something like that, he's manipulating, like, the evolution of these Pokemon because he's trying to figure out how to make a link between Pokemon and humans. And he ends up uh, taking the strongest Pokemon in the world, which is Mewtwo, and they capture him. And uh, they put on these little, like, brain-linking things and the mayor, eventually, he finds a way to sync it up to where he is then in control of Mewtwo's body. He can talk through Mewtwo and everything. And all these parade balloons explode. And there's this R stuff pouring out and making all the Pokemon just go crazy and fuse with their human partners. And it was absolutely insane, honestly. So then you come to this huge escalation battle where Pikachu... And his partner, or the kid, are like, you know, basically fighting, trying to get everything back in order, trying to figure out what to do until they rip the guy's headset off and um, pretty much reverse it, make everything go back to normal. And uh, the biggest twist is at the end, whenever they're like, okay, well, we found out my dad's not dead. He's fused with this Pikachu! So the entire time that he was hunting for his dad, he was with his dad all along, and they didn't have any memories. So, <laughs> isn't that weird? That is crazy. Does that make sense? Does that process with you yet? Because if I were to just say that to someone, I don't think they'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, Pikachu. Dad Pikachu. Yeah. So, so like, when they do all the crazy stuff there now, you, you got to get upset those was that like cgi created really good like that when it was really good all the little pokemon were perfect i loved it they're so cute and all the little voices for them were just so great it made me happy (laughs) i'd love to live in a pokemon world like that like the closest thing that we have is pokemon go and i whenever it first came out I was really into it. Like, I'd get up at crack of dawn with my best friend, and I'd throw on my ash hat and long socks, and we'd go Pokemon hunting all day. Like, we'd Pokemon hunt all day until I uh, I broke my phone, and I couldn't log into the same account, and it was really sad because I was, like, super far along. Yeah, I had one of my models' fathers was really big into it. and Yeah. And, well, it's crazy because it's like <laughs> – it's like – well, you know who I'm talking about because we were talking about one of the things we did, the, the table incident. And, and it's like, of course, he wasn't noticing because he was playing Pokemon Go. I can attest to this. And <laughs> I know he was because he wasn't paying attention, but that's what happens. And it's like, okay. <laughs> I'm not, I never got into it, but downtown in the park, they had Pokemon Go groups, so uh, I like the park better because uh, oh, it's so cool. Yeah, the, the, I lived up in Chicago at the yeah. time when it started booming, and the communities out there were insane. Like there was a really nice place on the Naperville Strip that everyone would go, the Plainfield Park area. Everyone yeah. would gather, and like it'd be like three o'clock in the morning, and there'd be hundreds of people still out playing Pokemon. Yeah. Well, see, they'd, they'd meet at the downtown about after 6 o'clock, but the problem with downtown, you would run into a car or something. That's mm-hmm. my biggest problem with downtown. But, like, the park, 
they they got ducks and swans and all that kind of thing. So and Pokemon. Yeah, the, the most thing you're going to run into is probably the pond or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the fishing pond, and that's about it. I'm like, you might get a little wet, but you're not going to run into a car or another kid or something. Cause I, I, I remember it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a friend up there, and we would go on Pokemon adventures, and uh, he would give me his phone, and I'd have my phone, and he'd be driving around, and we'd be finding all the Pokemon in the area with both of these phones in my hand. It was oh. a lot of fun. Well, what was funny was... Um... See, we meet, uh, you go uh, across from the park is Dairy Queen. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I'd go to Dairy Queen afterwards, and they'd meet up after Dairy Queen. And there, there'd be, like, about three of them that would be dressed up like Ash. Yeah. And uh, most of them. But it was so funny because, okay, like, the ducks, like, they, they migrate a certain way. And it was so funny because the Pokemon Go people would migrate just like the ducks. <laughs> and they'd fall on them. It was so funny when I'm sitting there at Dairy Queen and here they showed up with their backpack and everything. But it was cool. It was like, it was interesting. And it's like the park to me is like, like I said, a little bit safer. Downtown, I watch kids run in a pose. I watch kids run in other kids. You know, yeah. Walk out in the street, that kind of thing. That was me too. I was real bad about yeah. it. Like, especially like if I was about to find something and catch a Pokemon, I would stop. Just stop walking, and my friends would always make fun of me for it because I don't I don't know why I'd do it. I'd stop walking and play, you know, and they'd be like, "Dude, come on!" Like wherever I was, I just stop dead in my tracks and. <laughs> okay, so where are we at in the movie now? So we've got a lot of uh, craziness going on, right? Yeah, basically, um, yeah, we were just talking about the end where. The dad is Ryan Reynolds, which made me happy. <laughs> so then you get to see him and the little Pikachu and the kid all be happy together, happy ever after. Was it was it a little bit more surprising than, uh, say, Endgame? Or... <laughs> Nothing was more surprising than Endgame. <laughs> Endgame had me going the entire time, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't heard about like buying tickets ahead of time until in game in a long long time yeah it was absolutely crazy like we had to schedule i think it was a few days in advance like i got yeah. like my funds and then i was like okay well i need to schedule now so we can get tickets and the theater was full like i'm pretty sure almost every seat was taken yeah. for the movie which was absolutely crazy for that well like I said, I didn't get to see Detective Pikachu. I was going to try to go on the way Friday night home and do it. But, you know, something else came up. And mm -hmm. that's, the way, that's the way it has been. Like I said, I've got to get out of this funk so bad. I hate it. Because <laughs> it's like, it's just like, you know, and I know it's because of schedule change. I know it's because of weather change and all this stuff. That's like, I don't even feel like talking to people. I've had me so offers like on videos and stuff to do because you know do music videos which is something I gotta sit down with a guy and go over his and get his done and but like also like with this Instagram deal that we're I'm working out which I'm good I can't wait to do that as well because uh, you know seeing how fresh I mean we, I stopped posting the Instagram <laughs> I've been so bad about it. I think I did yeah. one post at ASTL, and I didn't even do anything for ASEN. And yeah. I'm sitting here, I'm like, why is my following not growing? And it's like, duh, because you're not it's posting anything. Yeah, that's why it's like with me, I didn't go. And I'm like three cons behind posting pictures. I got some great pictures, too. I haven't posted. But it's like you keep on going back, and you're like, oh, that looks great. That looks great, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, then people say, oh, what about – I had somebody talking about, oh, I haven't seen a News of Bazaar. You haven't – oh, yeah, I haven't done a News of Bazaar. So I recorded some of those today. And so basically I'm trying to get everything set up. It'll get better as uh, time uh, goes on. I'm trying to get – now this is the thing, too, is uh, if you do get to do um, the Paducah Galaxy Con this year – I'm seeing about trying to get uh, you to do a panel, so you know, get us to do a panel together because uh, they didn't. Just get me it. on with the dates, and I'll see if I can yeah. figure something out. Yeah. 
Yeah, the only problem is I just started this new job, and I don't I don't even think I'm going to be able to make it to Midwest, which breaks my heart, honestly. Yeah. I always go. When, yeah, I know. I, I know a lot of people are going to that one. I um, I haven't broke down and gone to Chicago yet, cons yet. And I think it's because, like, I think with us, like, you got Chicago, I got Nashville. So it's like, when you do Chicago, I'm doing Nashville. And I think mm -hmm. it works out good like that. But, you know, as far I mean, Nashville... I mean, I should pursue it more as far as, like, doing stuff there, but I don't. Used to, we used to go to Nashville, like, every flipping weekend we were there doing something. Every weekend. Yeah, I remember you always talk, yeah. talking about it, always something new. Yeah, and it's like, and I've been meaning trying but, to But, uh... Whoops. Yeah, and we just never really got to yet yeah it, it, it'll get, oh, it's hard <laughs> well it's it's gonna work out because it's like things are like i said it's gonna be different because like like i said i'm getting paid for the blog get paid for the youtube uh -huh. if we can get to that a thousand subscribers on youtube then we're set you know for whatever we gotta do i'm gonna try to but there's like, might take a little longer than we planned. Yeah, I want. I figured we're already gonna halfway happen. through the year. Well, I figured <laughs> what's going to happen with this is going to take a little bit to to get it started. Cause like, uh, one thing mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, I'm finding, you know, trying to find a new demographic, and it's like, I mean, like we we're talking about, cause things as far as my demographic has changed, you know, and it's tough switching over because but it's just i think it's for the best for me because you know it just is i mean i think it's healthier let's put it this way <laughs> that's fair enough yeah because i you know it's like you know going back to like we were talking about the um you know the whole thing i mean you can sit there and like i mean i, I looked at you know, I mean, it was fun doing the J-pop and K-pop thing, but it just has gotten where, you know, I want to avoid it like the plague because... Um, People are mean? No. Well, <laughs> no, it's the opposite. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's definitely the not, yeah. The not meanies. Uh, and, and that's the point where it gets really weird. I mean, it's like you either got like, I mean, it's like couple of uh, people we work with and you know how I'm talking about um, they their biggest problem they'll say this and they, they like post and they're going to get back into YouTube and we'll see how things work out in August whatever but they said the biggest their biggest problems is their fans because they're they are afraid to offend them I mean and like going to this new demographic with what we're doing like movie reviews and stuff it's not a like these people do not wear these movies on their sleeve like they do yeah people <laughs> get really sensitive yeah. about stuff yeah like fangirls and fanboys fangirls and fanboys are like really weird i mean it's like i think the last thing when i did the k-pop reviews which were they were easy i used to go to burger king i take my laptop and i could just like type out like three k-pop reviews at burger king <laughs> come back and, sort them yeah. and put them up i mean i i mean they were just bam 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 and w i was getting medium amount of views or whatever but when i'd go when like I said i go over to p these girls that were actually doing the reviews i don't think they were just watching them for the reviews i think they were watching them for the girls you know and it's like there's no way i was going to compete with that and that was fine there was one girl that i talked to who actually was just given a really reviews like they were detailing the rest of the girls are just fangirling. So you had this one girl who was like, okay, this is what I think about the music. This is what I think about the vocals. This is what I think about this. And that's what I was doing. But I kind of did it in like a snarky kind of way too to try to make it more entertaining. So I did. Mm -hmm. I would do that. She would do it. And she was really good at it. We became really good friends. But we just were not getting a lot of the views. And I said, that's kind of crazy. So it's like I go check down the other reviews. And it was like a girl like – overly excited you know and it's like this is not like detailed review this is just fangirling mm -hmm. you know and it's like if you just want to fangirl that's not that's not who i am and the same way i talked to her and she was like 
her, she's from Eastern European. She's like, no, I do not fangirl. I give good review. I give a good review detail. No fangirl. I just, I said, I'm the same way. I said, we're not going <laughs> to win this thing because we're, we're competing with these cute little girls going, oh, and Susu is so cute, and she's got these ears, she's so beautiful, and I just love her to death. And it's like, I got to compete with that. And there's no <laughs> way I'm going to compete with that because you're either going to have some guy who's in love with the reviewer or fangirl, or you're going to have some girl who's like, yes, you're right, she's wonderful, and she's perfect and everything. I'm not going to do that. You know, it's like there was a show, too, this was about like it for me. There was a podcast that had a long time J pop idol girl that I've known for a long time and I love her death. And she's a big uh, lolly troll. And mm-hmm. uh, she was on this show, and a bunch of them have been on the show. It's called A to J Connections, which is American to Japanese Connections. That's the name of the show. So she's on there, and I'm, I decided one day they have a live show. And I, said, so I, I thought I'd go and participate. So I went and participate when their live shows. And it's like two guys just sitting there talking about these outer girls, how perfect they are, and all this kind of thing. And I'm thinking, this totally sucks. <laughs> it's like that's kind of weird, yeah. It's like I cannot do that. I'm just gonna. I gotta have. There's. There is. I'll put my two positives out, but there's gonna be a little bit of negative too to everything. It's like you know when we do these reviews, like you, you know, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. Hey, deal with it. All right, it's not my kind of movie. I understand it. it's like I didn't like that that other one too. I thought it was terrible and and things like that. And so I'm not gonna sit here and fanboy and stuff and do all that crap because it's just it's so it looks awful and that kind of thing. So that's the reason why things have moved. But like you know, too, I don't know. You know, as far as like what the future of the me going to anime cons because I that was. Oh my goodness. I think the only way I would do it is if I, people would get me ahead of time. If we had like certain places where we could book shoots or something, I'd be okay with it. But Yeah, it would be so much better. It really would. I mean, I liked in the videos. The video came out fine. That's but, always fun, yeah. Yeah, but 10 years I, ago, I was watching them the other day. We had a lot of fun with those. Oh, yeah, and those are doing really well, and I think those will eventually catch on. And, you know, my J, my... I think our Why Do You Cosplay is probably going to be the biggest. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying is the um, the only thing, like, I ha- had close to that that was big was, like, our, um, was, is it J-pop or K-pop? I did those videos and uh-huh. before this, and that that's hit over, like, 4,000 views. And yeah. And it's like that's an old one. I was like, I sent, I actually, I don't know why I sent that old video out of yours. And it was like in regular format. Then it went back, and they like squished the format. I'm like, what the heck? Looks that's terrible. Weird. Yeah, what's with that? For those kind of things, but yeah, that's really weird. Now, what is the uh, the con list that's going on? The what? The cons that are coming up that you got. That, you were uh, that I got, I, I really wanted to go to Midwest, but I don't think, I don't know if that's going to happen unless I go to my boss and I'm like, yo, I have this really big, you know, yeah, something with modeling movie. opportunity, which is also could potentially, you know, it's not yeah. necessarily like a lie because, you know, I have good opportunities whenever I get to go to these things, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Um, I might have enough vacation time saved up to go to Connaught Delete. But it's a lot smaller of one, and a lot of the friends that I have in the con scene don't even go to that anymore. So I don't know to what extent it would really be worth it, or who I would even be rooming with. So I'm guessing maybe for sure ASTL and ASA next year, because I'm making sure to take vacation time off for that. Because those are my cons, those are my birthday cons, I love those. And we used to go to Naka, but the friends that I went to Naka with are moving to Jersey next month. So that's kind of moving around all my plans. So I'm not. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm thinking about being bigger. I mean, if this Galaxy Con does. And this guy really got to cut his grass while I'm doing a movie review? Okay. <laughs> I said, does this guy really need to cut his grass while I'm doing a movie review? I, to, I can't even hear him. Okay, good. It's, it's really loud here. but So yeah, if I'm a little distracted, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, it's like one thing I said about these internet, they do uh, gate these pretty good so you don't hear a background noise. That's the reason, like I said, I like how this does, but like when I do recording, because I have to hear everything, I have to turn that AC down. And look at it, it's 1230 and no one show up. So I'm like, what the, what the, you know, people complain about AC and no one's here. So, you know, I should have just kept the AC off. But <laughs> help them. I can't live without AC, to be honest. Like, I, I, I try night. not use it in my car because yeah. I know it uses gas and gas mm -hmm. is expensive. But, like, the other day I was just melting. Yeah. Like, legit, just melting. It was so bad. We bought a fan in Japan for me to basically cuddle with at night because it was so hot. <laughs> well, uh, here's, like, the, like I said, the fan. I mean, it's like, it's just the noise for me because, like, when you record and stuff, you don't want the background noises. But, you know, at night, I definitely would have to have it on. But then... Yeah. If it gets really cold at night, then still on it. It just it, it wake you wake up and you hurt your chest is hurting. Oh, I can't believe tomorrow's Monday already. I'm just so sick of this. <laughs> I know the week was. Oh, I've been working so much. Like yeah. I've I've never I'm working two jobs right now, which usually wouldn't be too much of a big deal. But we're lacking a store manager right now at one of my jobs, and it's just been chaos. Yeah. Well, chaos. I got, I got my black lights in. I'm excited about that. Oh, and they're great. And I I was testing those the other night. And I also have like a black light diffuser that goes over my uh, flash on my camera. It's awesome. So what I'm thinking about doing because of everybody's schedule, Ashley has to work Sundays now. And you have to work. Every, every day but Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Basically. So, so what I'm going to do is kind of like divide everybody up. And I think that's probably for the best anyways, is like have just come and do you on a Sunday and then go back and do her on a Saturday and then figure out what Ren and Ash wants to do. Because I think Ren and Ash is slowly want to get back in this thing. So I'm kind of working a deal of what we're going to do. I don't know how we're going to work. Aren't they out, in, in, uh, aren't they out far now, though? Yeah, they're in Champagne right now. So I'm trying to figure things out. <laughs> I haven't... Uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, regarding all that, we'll see. It's like, and I, I just haven't felt like talking to Abby since she didn't show up to shoot once and, and all that. Oh, was it like a no call, no show? Or I thought last time no, she, she was called me, but it's not that. It's just, I don't know with all that stuff. What's the best thing to do? Because here's the thing. If I get into the whole Instagram modeling thing, which it looks like, I, I'm afraid I'm going to be so busy that, you know, the cosplay is going to, like, go second, which is I'm okay with it. As, you know, like I said, I'm kind of getting out of the anime cosplay thing all together because oh. of this stuff. Oh, it's so bad in your area. There's this, like, 16-year-old model approached me the other day. I was like, look, you know, been that road, done that. I said, you know, I said, and parental supervision means jack to me now. Cause yeah, yeah. Like, because what way you know my situation was because I had parentals, uh, I had both parents, and it's like it don't mean nothing now. It's like so screw that. I said like you know you get eighteen, give me a call, but I'm done with it because I ain't gonna follow that drama again. Yeah, it's just it's not in our best interest anymore. No, I mean it's now like, that the rest of us are finally older, like yeah. we can't. Well, I mean, and you got all you that are older. And that's the mm -hmm. whole thing. It's like with you, it's like I was telling you, I mean, I don't have to do anybody else in St. Louis because I got you. It's like there's no sense in trying to go out there and try to find somebody else. I'm and like, I will take Monopoly on that. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I mean, I'll go out and say, look, but I'm thinking about us going back to the wall again and getting like a couple or two or three of us out there and say, hey, let's meet Please. up at the wall on Sunday and let's just show up with some really cool fashions and have a good time. Yes, um, I would love to do that. I would like to get – um more of the gothic alternative stuff that I was probably, I, I'd say that's my niche. That's right. probably my best niche in that. So we'd pick an outfit from that at least. Um, and then, of course, if you have anything you have in mind. Didn't we do two outfits last time? Yeah, we sure did. Today. How did I change? In the did car? I just change in my car? Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. I'm crazy. Like. I am. I, I tell you, I I, uh, I don't know how it's gonna get us like next year. You know what? One of the things 
I mean, we have been. We twice we look. We've been looking at RVs, and just like that way, you can change an RV and have like makeup stuff in there would be really awesome. That'd be really nice, yeah. To have because like next year, but like here's the deal is like if we set up for tables next year, because I think we might be better off with next year setting up tables. We're looking at different celebrities at our tables along with you. So, yeah. um, uh, some of them are like, I, I mean, like I said, these are not anime conventions. Again, you got granite. You got to think about that. These are toy cons and these are comic cons. I know an author that writes something that would totally be in the scene that uh, lives close to me. Yeah. I, I've got plenty of those, but no, uh, these are actually, uh, one is, uh, Evans. We work with him in Nashville not too long ago. He, uh, I don't, this is for older people, but there's plenty of older people in Comic Con. He played BJ from BJ and the Bear. Okay. All right. So he's, uh, I've talked to him a little bit. We, Sierra and I did some shots with him and stuff. We had a great time. He took to our pictures. It was pretty cool. <laughs> he's pretty cool. He was the coolest celebrity I have ever met. And it's like, of course, you're a little bit young. I remember, I was a kid when he was driving the truck, but then he went into Masquerade and he did other shows as well. But he was at uh, Toy Con, and we talked a little bit. And then there's also uh, she has separated from. You ever heard this? You ever heard of Star Trek Next Generation? Yeah, of course. Sorry, okay. that took me a second to like yeah. process. But yeah, of course. Okay, well the girl there, uh, I can't think Nina something rather. Well, she's kind of like separated from the group. Let me tell you how this story <laughs> came out. So what happens, like, you can book them ahead of time for a certain amount of money, right? So, like, her price has gone down because she separated herself from the Star Trek Next Generation. So, like, she's become affordable to go to cons and stuff. So we're looking into that as well. Because, like, I want to talk to Glenn about setting some of this stuff up and saying, look, we need a celebrity to make this con happen. I can make it happen, you know, and put them at our table and uh, help us do that kind of thing because, like, um, so I was looking at, but let me tell you this story. She get, her price went down because they would all tour together, right? At uh -huh. cons. Well, she, when she gets to her part, she got really emotional because she says, I'm so glad that Star Trek Next Generation happened to me because I didn't have to do filthy movies anymore. And so like, everybody was like, so uncomfortable, tired of hearing her doing that. So they kind of like separated off to her own thing now. So, like, you can get her on Facebook or whatever and hook her up for a con, but she's a pop, still a popular character and stuff. But I don't have any problem with her talking about, if she wants to talk about that she don't have to do porn anymore, I'm more power to her, you know? I'm like, you know. That is, I wasn't expecting that. I was like, oh. Yeah, well, she was, like, up there, and that's exactly the way they were. Like, Frank and all them, who was, who was doing the, uh, they were up there, and he was talking about, I... This is uh, this way the story went because it was like at a, uh, a guy I know he's from Wisconsin he goes to all the like Star Trek conventions now that we may do one you know just out of just have fun you know whatever I don't know I'm not a big Star Trek fan but anyways it comes up there and uh, Commander Frank they go to him William Fred's like I um uh, he said tell some stories about it. he said yeah we we stuck something in the microwave and all this kind of played this joke on Nina Fortez whatever her name is. And, and all this kind of thing. And, and then they go over to her. She says, I'm just happy that I don't have to do those filthy, filthy movies anymore. That I can just go with you people all the way around these Star Trek conventions. And so they felt uncomfortable having her around here because she get really emotional and stuff about it. And so, like, now she's, like, torn on her own. And, that, and her price has gone down. So I'm like... You know, she's a pretty cool chick, and I'm like, you know, and she'd bring in some fans and stuff, so I, someone like her or something like that, so we're looking into that, like, as well, but here's the thing, we've got to, I've got to figure out, this is the reason why I was talking about plan of action is, I've got to somehow figure out between the shoots and between the videos, you know, what's priority, or do I need someone to take over the shoots, not the shoots, but the, the stuff for the shoots, and someone work on videos. I can't do both. It's just driving me nuts. It's really 
stressful. You know what I'm saying? I used to be able to uh, kind of like intertwine them both, the shoots and these as well. So I don't know why it's so hard because we've got to have the content on Instagram or you don't yeah, have I the know. followers. And, I've um, also been not posting anything. Like it's it's tragic. I yeah. need to be. I took so many photos and we've taken so many photos and they need to be up, but I just... Well, yeah, and I don't know, you know, with me if it's or with you too, if it could be we got have gotten a little burned out or we've gotten busy, 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 busy. very busy. Yeah, I did too. Had to take a couple of weeks to work on the house, but I mean that's what, yeah, it is one of those things. I don't know how we would what to do to get that motivation back <laughs> because <laughs> I mean. I mean, let's. I mean, it's like with me. Yeah, a shoot at the wall would be something I remarkable. Would do it, and if I did do it with you, I would probably pick up a couple Instagram models with you, mm -hmm. and we're just me at the mall. I'd like to do it as well. Let me see what they can do as far as my schedule, real quick. I'm getting there on the time because I don't have to spend a lot of time with um for that. But let me go here to see how that because I would love to get back out there, but as I said, just to get some I got Saint Louis. I used to be so inspired always to want to run out and take photos and do photos and do all these different looks and I've gotten lazy and just like well I, I know I, I'm I'm the same way to, as with you trying to figure this out because like I said a lot of it has been schedule change a lot of it is you got your weather change yeah that's um, also true and it's also the fact that we live so far apart it'd be so much easier if we were down the road like i honestly believe we'd get a lot more done yeah and i understand that i wish there was a way to fix those things because uh i mean i mean my thing is if i ever had to go back to the way it was where i have to run things out of country like I did one time. That, that must have been crazy at all hours of the night. Like, Well, the thing is, is what, no, it would actually work out for you and maybe Alex or whoever you want to bring along because, see, that's what I wanted to do with uh, back when the, the J-pop group thing happened. You know, I mean, back in those days, I was so upset that we weren't getting things going, but I'm, like, thankful that it didn't get you know going now but uh mm -hmm. those days oh my gosh i was like okay let's see what we got here to st louis on saturday um because yeah you realize like the oshi project which is our which is our competitor at the time that uh -huh. gofundme was on those is they would probably still be around. Yeah. You realize that? Because, like, um, those days when we were doing see, that's the biggest problem back in those days was the money. Is Yeah, that really was. If I, like, if I had a video camera and if we had, like, if I had someone to help me back then, like, whenever we first started yeah. getting going, I was doing everything. Well, and, and that's the thing is, like, with me, my prayer was, like, um, um, was like if I worked with just one client, you know, then you'd get famous and I, I'd be stuck alone. And so that's the reason I worked with so many people. And, but it's like, we had the better plan. Let's face it. The problem was the internet destroyed us. And that's the reason why, you know, uh, the Tanaji project fell apart because when Becky Kroll came on and did the Oshi project, we were done. Because without her backing, we don't have the internet base. Mm -hmm. We had the better plan because we worked around locally, and it would take longer to us build up, but we needed the internet backing for financial reasons. 
And so here they were, all they were doing is just slamming us left and right, you and who else was in there, and Ella and, and um, Emmy and Cole and Alyssa. All of them were slammed all the time on the Internet because they knew that we were a threat. And the thing was, like with Madison, she had a contract with Oshi Project. We worked with Madison. And mm -hmm. Madison, we did more stuff with Madison than the Oshi Project did with her. But the thing was, you know, they had the internet backing. So whatever Madison did, the Oshi Project just would still rise, even though we worked with them. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, let's see if I can do it at night. All right. Yeah, they, okay, check this out. I could be like, I could get there, because see, I don't have to be, I don't usually have to be anywhere Monday till like 11 o'clock, Monday morning. So I technically. I'm usually off Monday morning. Yeah, but I'm saying I could be on Sunday and be, leave back at 6 o'clock on Sunday. Leave at oh. Monday. That would give us enough time. Yeah. But I'm saying, I which would be okay. I, what I'm saying, I'd get, I yeah, I'd get home at I'd get home at ten o'clock, but I don't have to be at work till eleven o'clock. So, mm -hmm. That's so yeah, we could do a Sunday sometime. And like I said, I'd like to try to get the wall one of these days and just get a couple yeah. of uh, thing. I can get a couple of Instagram models. And what we're doing with the Instagram models, like you take half of the thing, you take half. It's like, and that way. You know, it's like you get half of the uh, sh uh, photos, and I get half the photos, so we both get content. Mm -hmm. So that works out that way. That way we don't have to – that's the reason why the Instagram and, uh, models are so easy. Get, like, hopefully uh, – actually, I think Alex is off on Sundays, too, so okay. he'd be able to help us. Well, and uh, that's what I'm saying. If not, but like I said, uh, it looks like I could do that workout on Sundays because – I didn't think about that because it kind of messed things up with this last shoot because it was like when Ashley was like, oh, crap, I'm going to have to start working Sundays. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. you were off on Sundays. Yeah, and I understand that. And it's like, and, you know, I told her, like, uh, I, I like the Saturdays and Sundays off because eventually, like, next year, it'll be like Friday, Saturday, and Sundays for con. And that's what mm -hmm. I want to do again. Which I'll definitely be trying to do more of, so... Yeah. So yeah, we can we can definitely work that out uh, doing something on Sundays and and like I said I can get and like we meet up like a couple of Instagram. The only problem is is the changing factor. That's what's going. Yeah, to that's true. I wish. I don't know how I did it last time, but whatever. Maybe there's a, like a hotel I could get near there or something. I don't know. All them hotels are like super pricey. Yeah, super pricey. Not worth it. And I don't know. We'll look at it. I, re I remember one year after doing uh, uh, the riverfront photos, uh, I drove home in Robin, and yeah. I had to eventually get out and get gas, and everyone was just like. <laughs> get gas in Robin. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. Everyone was just like. Yeah, that's cause it. Because it was somewhere in the middle of, like, probably in the middle of Illinois. I was like, hey, hey. Well, it's like I got I got a picture of you on my desk as Robin, and uh, and some people ask me it's like, "Who's Robin?" <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's my nephew. <laughs> nephew. Who's Robin? But yeah, we could do something like it. I'm just like said, I, I'm like like yesterday. I I, I just, there again. I I mean, I did do work around the house, but that's about it. And I know I need to get out there, and it's like, I just don't get in a situation like where Lester's at right now, because he's like, I don't know, he's totally become like a uh, ex introvert to the point where I don't know what's going on there, man. I mean, it's like, I mean, dude used to, what do we, what was one thing we, oh yeah, like when we go to Jackson, mm -hmm. he would run the camera. He don't, he won't even do that no more. I mean, he's like, I mean, he'll go do the, the shoots like he did in St. Louis, and I was hoping he's having a good time. He enjoyed. I think he was like a kid in candy store. Yeah. But uh, when he went to St. Louis this last time, so I was glad that maybe get a little bit, and he got a little excited and said, "Well, we gotta get back to um, doing things again." 
regarding that. I mean, he's got to get over the whole Logan thing. I don't, you know, I wish that, you know, I, I just don't know. I mean, I, tr I tried, um, you know, with the Logan thing, that was just, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's just, he, he's got to understand there's some boundaries we got to put on ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, and that's the reason why, like, with me, and it's, I, I, if I can set up shoots outside, I don't see the purpose of, like, except for shooting video of going to the cons. Because, like, I've, like, I'm, number one, like I've said, you know, the I can get better lighting. I've got better lighting. I've got, you know, uh, more time. Because it's like with me, I'm like, I'll shoot 500 shots and maybe only 100 is that good. That's fine. But you don't get that opportunity at a con. You know, yeah. You get in there and you shoot 20 shots and all of them could be bad. <laughs> it's like yeah. The light. Well, it's it's like, rough. It, it, trying to find the right thing. A lot of people don't understand. It's like, well, I'm getting, you know, I don't know, out of field. I, I, did you see my last um, Photoshop thing? Did you think that turned out all right? Or? From the Harley? No, the... Um, Black Widow. Oh, I haven't even gotten to see him yet. Yeah, that was on Instagram, and I'll tell you what, that was like, um, it that don't even look like the girl. Yeah. <laughs> and I like I put it on, I put it on Instagram. If you know this cosplayer, cosplayer, you know the comment below, and I'm like, she's gonna look at that thing and go, because I don't even know who the girl is. You know, like she don't look yeah. at that thing like who the heck is that? But she's wearing my outfit. <laughs> It's amazing. I mean, this stuff is driving me crazy, This, all this technology. I mean, it's like, you know, like I, I worked on your swim. I, I said, eventually, I'd like to try to work on your swimsuit stuff because I could really blow that out of water with this new mm -hmm. stuff they got going on. I mean, I mean, I got, I can make, uh, oh, especially if you're in spandex. If you're spandex, this, this, this software is awesome. <laughs> it's like totally awesome. I <laughs> worked it was like, like, boop, dit, boop, 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 and it's I still need to get a new Robin before. Yeah. Right. When is that usually? That... Are, no, I talked to Glenn about that. He said they the Paducah hasn't uh, uh, want to do it this year. What? Yes. No. Yes, because I would have already gotten with you regarding that. Ugh. Oh. That city council is crazy. They lost a big anime con there. It's in Owensboro now. And I'm going there probably next week. I have to deal with Sarah. Oh, great. But... Oh, my God. Sad. Yes, it is. That was pretty awesome, too. And I was like, I don't know. Maybe they'll do it next year. But he was upset because he's like, because people were like, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? He's like, Paducah hasn't approached me about the whole deal. Because that all goes from the city council. They put that together. Because they have to have the police there. They have to have all the security there. They have to have everything set up. And it has to be approved. When does it usually there. take place? July. Yeah. It's not going to happen. And you saw I sent you something from Benton. So it could be that Benton's going to do their own. Metropolis has got their own too, but they're not as. Let's put it this way: Metropolis ends at noon. Yeah. Because we, we we stay That's out. That's terrible news. Yeah, I I you know it's part of it. I mean, of what they're trying to do. Um, I don't know. You know, with all that kind of stuff, because. Uh, I mean, like with Glenn and his buddies, I mean, they're doing a lot of charity work with their cosplay stuff. And, and you know, I've tried to work with uh, a local charity regarding what we're doing and stuff. And I haven't got to get them on board. And I've done everything I could. Because I, I, I want, if we do a charitable thing, I want something that I want to donate to as well, you know. I don't mind the St. Jude's thing, and, you know, if you want to do one in Cape, I don't care. You, I'm more power to you. I'd, I'd go with you, whatever. But 
you know, I, I'd like to see more of it, but he he's get so involved with the charity thing, with the cosplay thing, which is really cool. I mean, it's like he goes to St. Jude's, he goes to Roy Rogers Hospital in Cape Girada, and he goes visit the kids and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's... I, I have mean, friends who do that. Yeah. And he, he does, he enjoys himself and doing it too. And it's like, but, you know, this thing he wanted to organize. And, of course, the thing is, too, he's re just recently married. I don't know how much that's going to affect all that, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. The goal is trying to figure out where, where to take this, but I know next year would be good because, like, I'd like to get you do some more pageants, though, to be honest with you, so we can get some advertising for that since we're now going to be making money off this stuff and products and stuff. If you want me doing pageants, I have to lose the weight I put on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Well, it's like you did the, I mean, like the pin-up pageants. I'm not talking about yeah. you know, that kind of No, thing. yeah, I know. <laughs> I've, 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 uh, yeah, let's just say I would not fit in that dress anymore. Because, but. see, Racktober is coming up, and uh, which is a big uh, pin-up pageant. And, okay. And that's an option. rigged, but okay. Okay. Yeah, they get us good exposure, and they are fun. I do yeah. enjoy them. Well, that's one I can actually participate because my um, uncle has an automotive, auto, automotive, automotive place, so they have their own little booth and everything like that. So, that's cool. Yeah, so I can get in there. I love the car shows and uh, things like that. Of course, it could be age. I just do. I like being, and see, like I missed this last one, and and just to take a model out there and just say, hey, sit in this hot rod or whatever, or sitting on this bike or whatever, you can do lots of creative stuff. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. We even had an opportunity to get uh, part of one of my photos into Full Throttle Magazine, but we didn't.